The Voice of Prophecy Bible Course The Paths of Faith Lesson 1 God Speaks to Men When we begin to study these lessons, the main purpose of which is to make us aware of the marvelous plan of God with regard to His creatures, we want to recall the Declaration of Christ. Blessed are those who listen to the word of God and keep it. Luke 11:28. There is a God. God exists. It is an undeniable fact. Reason forcefully proclaims it. The heart naturally comes to the same conviction. Experience shows, moreover, that the notion of God takes root in the heart before imposing itself on reason. But God cannot be defined or explained. If it is intelligible, it is incomprehensible. Atheists are rare. The causes of their unbelief are more often moral insubordination slash disobedience to God than intellectual. The Holy Scriptures declare that they are meaningless, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14, 1 Question, do you arrive, by reason and in your heart, at the conviction that there is a God? He spoke. God is infinitely perfect, while we are imperfect creatures. Divine perfections are therefore partially inaccessible to us, although they respond to our inner nature and our secret aspirations. Now, God wanted to reveal Himself to us. He spoke to men. He still speaks to them in particular through conscience, nature, and the Holy Scriptures. These three three sources of revelation complement each other without contradicting each other. Only the last one which is the most important constitutes a written revelation. It is that which we will study through all our lessons. It contains magnificent treasures. Happy is he who discovers them and takes them. His life is turned upside down, transformed. He finds in this book the secret of happiness. Your word, said the psalmist, is a lamp at my feet, and a light on my path. Psalm 119 105. Question, what are the main sources through which God reveals himself to men? By consciousness. God speaks to us through conscience in us, his disapproval, on the contrary makes us suffer. In the latter case, its presence manifests itself in the form of remorse, which can cause repentance. God has entrusted conscience with the mission of attesting the existence in us of three fundamental notions. a. The notion of good and evil. b. The concept of moral obligation. c. The concept of individual freedom. The fact of being able to discern good from evil poses the principle of moral obligation, if I am able to see good, I must do it, if I can see evil, I must avoid it. Such a possibility implies at the same time that I am a free being, therefore responsible for my actions. Question. What are the three notions by which conscience speaks to us about God? Consciousness needs a guide. However, conscience is not infallible. It needs to be constantly enlightened and purified. As an obligation to do, Christ compared it to a lamp, 
which must be carefully maintained if one does not want to be plunged into darkness. By subjecting her conscience to compromises, to complacency, by forcing her to approve what she condemns, we gradually make her lose her sensitivity, she speaks less and less and ends up not protesting anymore. Consciousness even sensitive, that is to say normal, not cauterized, consciousness is an insufficient guide. She conscience herself tact with a light hitherto ignored and which showed him where the truth was. His Paul's conscience was suddenly enlightened, straightened, forcing him to act in a completely different way. After his conversion, Saul became Paul, and he could exclaim, My judge is the Lord, 1 Corinthians 4, 4, and give himself to this beautiful testimony, I strive to have constantly a blameless conscience before. Acts 24 colon 16 If man needs conscience, conscience needs God, his word which must be the norm, guiding him to allow him to play his role. As Vinet said, the gospel is the consciousness of consciousness itself. Question, what does consciousness need to fully play its role? By nature. God also speaks through nature. In the very existence of the worlds the power of the Creator explodes, in the order and the harmony which governs them, the infinite wisdom of a great artist is shown, in providence, which has foreseen everything and provided everything so that life springs up in an uninterrupted way reads the touching kindness of a compassionate and merciful father. Nature is, as Buffon wrote, the outward throne of divine magnificence. The psalmist exclaims, admiring, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the expanse manifests the work of his hands. Psalm 19, 1 and the Apostle Paul notes, the invisible perfections of God, his eternal power and his divinity, are seen as the eye, since the creation of the world, when we consider them in his works. Romans 1.20 Question, in what terms do the Holy Scriptures show that God also speaks through nature? Two incomplete revelations. Scripture declares excusable those who do not find God in nature. Romans 1.20, however, the message that God addresses to man by nature has lost its eloquence and its persuasion. The harmony of the universe was disturbed by the revolt of Lucifer, who continues to sow the tears with both hands. Sin and suffering have branded the entire creation, which yearns for renewal. Romans 8.22 The teachings of nature can only be understood through the light that emanates from Calvary. There is in the cross a promise of restoration for nature in its Edenic beauty. Divine revelation as it is contained in nature is therefore incomplete. No more than that which comes from consciousness, it does not provide man with the necessary details on the particular purposes of the will of God in search of the sinner. The two of them do not succeed in leading man to know God, to love him and to serve him. They do not reveal the salvation of man through Jesus Christ. Question why are consciousness and nature incomplete revelations? A third revelation. To save the man, God went to find him where he was. He went down to his level. He first made him aware of his will towards him. 
A revelation accompanies the desired and decided redemption, and this revelation which is written is found in the Holy Scriptures. This book, the Bible, unique in the world, contains the words and deeds by which God instructs humanity through the centuries and until the end of time. By miraculous acts, God opens hearts and prepares them to receive his words, and by his words he explains his dispensations to them. In the Holy Scriptures, God acts, in the Holy Scriptures, God speaks. Thus, is completed the revelation which comes to us by consciousness and by nature. Question, what is the ultimate revelation? The greatest theme of the Holy Scriptures. Because they the Holy Scriptures contain what God did and said for the salvation of men, the Holy Scriptures are the story of this salvation through the incarnation and crucifixion of the Son of God. The Holy Scriptures are Jesus coming to seek and save what is lost. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 Jesus Christ is the living center of written revelation. In the Old Testament, he is desired, expected, prepared, and in the New Testament, he is embodied, greeted, worshipped, crucified, resurrected, glorified, and awaited for the second time. Christ will come, he comes, he will come. This is the central subject of the Holy Scriptures. Question, what is the great subject of the Holy Scriptures? A testimony. Therefore, the Holy Scriptures are a written testimony. Christ said, you search the Scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them, they are the witnesses of me. John 5.39 A whole gallery of witnesses marches before the attentive reader to bear witness to Christ. In recounting the well-known episode of the two disciples going to Emmaus and to which the risen Christ joined, Luke says, 24.27, that beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, Jesus, explained to them in all the scriptures what which concerned him. We understand that Saint Jerome could have exclaimed, to ignore the scriptures is to ignore Christ. He could just as easily have said, to ignore Christ is to ignore the scriptures. Question, to whom do the holy scriptures bear witness? Read and study the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scripture for present themselves to every man as an indispensable revelation, as the revelation par excellence. It is almost superfluous to recommend the Bible, it recommends itself. Reading and studying it. Whoever begins will do well to read the four Gospels first, then the book of Acts of the Apostles. Then he will read the Psalms and the Pentateuch, Genesis and the Exodus in particular, he can then undertake the Epistles, then the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, then the historical books of the Old Testament, outside the Pentateuch. The time will then come to attack the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah first, the twelve little prophets then, to go to the book of Job, to the song of songs, to return to the prophets, Ezekiel and Daniel, and to finish with the apocalypse. This is just a suggestion. There are a thousand ways to read and study the holy scriptures.
the best way will be the one that will do you the most good and keep you in close fellowship with Jesus Christ, your Savior. Begin now to study this marvelous revelation, and you will soon say like Jeremiah, 1516 I have gathered your words and have devoured them, your words brought joy and joy to my heart. Do you have any comments?